Buffing stats is an important aspect of Fire Emblem Heroes, and I feel like Spur type skills have been overshadowed by their more popular, more noticeable blue buff cousins. In this video we will cover what is a Spur skill, and how it is different than buffs, do Spur skills stack, when should you use Spurs, and then we will look at some of the variations of Spurs and other aspects of Fire Emblem Heroes. Spur skills are best described as invisible buffs. Normal buffs are shown on units as blue numbers, and you can see how much their normal stat is being increased by. Spurs are not shown on your hero's stats, but are very much there. For example, Delthea's weapon grants a plus 6 attack buff to Ike. She also has Drive Attack 2, which is a spur that adds another plus 3 attack to allies in range. You can see that Ike's stats only display the plus 6 attack from her weapon, while the plus 3 attack from her spur is not included. A key phrase for spur skills are the words, during combat. This is why spurs are not seen if you are looking at a unit's stats. If you meet the conditions of the spur, then damage calculations will indeed factor in the added stats from any spurs. Spurs can be powerful since they provide added power that is not visible at a glance. As such, not looking out for spur effects can lead players to their downfall. So how are spurs activated? I will be referring to spurs as a general term for any invisible buffs, however, there is a difference between the distinctly named skills. The regularly named spur type skills, such as Spur Attack 3, only work if the allies within one space. They usually provide plus 4 to the stat of their name. Drive type skills provide buffs to allies within two spaces, however, their effects are usually lower than a typical spur. They trade power for utility, since you will find it much easier to have allies within two spaces rather than being forced to stand next to their target. Gold and Ward skills are spurs that only work for a certain class type. They have a range of two spaces, same as drive skills, but also provide more stats. Gold type skills provide plus four attack and speed, while Ward type skills provide plus four defense and resistance. You can see that Gold and Ward type skills are extremely powerful, but they only work for their respective classes. We currently only have versions for armor units, cavalry units, and flying units. So a common question from newer players is, do spurs stack? The answer is yes. Unlike visible buffs, which are bonuses provided until their next turn, the invisible buffs from spurs do stack as long as you meet their conditions. In this example, Lucina has spur attack 3 and Delthea has drive attack 2. Ike will attack this poor healer for 46 damage. If we move Lucina next to Ike, he will deal 50 damage, which is a plus 4 increase. Now if we move Delthea in range with her Drive Attack 2, Ike will now deal 53 damage to the healer. As you can see, this proves that Spurs do indeed stack. We can take this further because there are ways to have multiple Spur effects coming from one unit. My Nino has a Spur Defense 3 C skill equipped and a Spur Defense 1 Sacred Seal equipped. They provide a plus 4 defense and plus 2 defense buff, respectively. As you can see from the screenshots, when Ike attacks the enemy's stall, he will take 14 damage in return. But Nino standing next to Ike during combat, he will only take 8 damage in return, which matches the correct plus 6 extra defense coming from the spurs. So when should you use spurs? Well, they do have many benefits, so our positioning is key to making them work. When baiting enemies into attacking, you can easily set up allies in the right position to make sure the unit baiting receives extra stats. When making an attack, if you are short by a small amount, then moving an ally with a spur into position first can help give you the boost needed to defeat that enemy. The panic status effect turns visible buffs into debuffs. Panic is a very strong counter to teams that rely on bonus stats to work. The reason panic doesn't work on spurs is because spurs only grant buffs during combat. There are many interactions when it comes to buffing and debuffing, but just remember that there is a difference between the blue numbers from visible buffs and the invisible buffs that come from spurs. Spurs also come into play for class centered teams. While the hone and fortified type skills for armor, cavalry, and flyer teams are very powerful, they cannot stack with each other because there are buffs that grant bonuses. So a cavalry unit next to two hone cavalry skills will not receive double the effects, However, a cavalry unit in range of two gold cavalry skills will indeed receive double the benefits. The best showcase of stacking spurs comes from armor emblem teams. A popular tactic is to run 3 to 4 ward armor skills on your team, and remember that ward type skills grant plus 4 defense and resistance. With 4 units on a team, the maximum amount of ward armor effects on one unit is going to be 3, 
which means a total of plus 12 defense and resistance. I don't know about you, but having a tank gain an additional plus 12 defensive stats is quite scary, and even the highest damaging units will begin to have trouble making a scratch in their armor. Now let's take a look at some variations of spurs in the game to just showcase where spur type effects can also be found. The Owl Tomes, which come in red, green, and blue for mages, grant plus 2 to all stats during combat if an ally is next to this weapon user. This effect can stack depending on the number of allies next to the target. Nidhogg, the legendary weapon of Innis, carries the same effect as Owl Tomes, but on a bow. These types of weapons are great for baiting, since you should be able to line up allies next to the user to grant them a lot of extra stats. Gerskogo, the weapon of Brave Lucina, has the effects of Drive Attack 2 and Drive Speed 2, but only for physical damage dealers. So while granting a lot of power, the conditions for activations have even more restrictions. The new ally support feature grants stats if those specific allies stand near each other when they fight. If allies within one space of each other, like normal spur type skills, then they receive plus 2 to stats. If they have one space between them, then they only receive plus 1 to stats, a similar effect to drive type skills. So we have gone over the different aspects of spurs and their benefits versus regular buffs. While spurs can be powerful, they require much more tactical positioning and sometimes thinking ahead. Spurs also inherently require you to have allies near each other, so maps that can split up teams via their terrain can be bad. The biggest thing to remember is that spurs are invisible if you are just looking at a unit's stats on the map. This can trip up lazy players in Arena who don't check what skills everyone is running, and are left wondering why they lost a the matchup that is usually the other way around. I think spurs are a little underused, so let me know what you think about them, and how you put them to use. If you enjoyed this video, then you can check out my other Fire Emblem Heroes guides about the game, and subscribe for more Fire Emblem Heroes content.